قديشاد ما راني شوم شي حاك روزو ثام اد متاي Then the mother of the sons of Zabadi came to him with her sons and kneeling before him, she asked him for something. And he said to her, what do you want? She said to Jesus, command that these sons of mine may sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your kingdom. But Jesus answered, you don't know what you're asking for. Are you able to drink the cup? that I am to drink. They said to him, we are able. He said to them, you will drink my cup, but to sit at my right hand and at my left is not my to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared by my father. Thank you, Shumasha. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, everyone. God is good. All the time. So if I have not told you lately that I love you, so I love you and I have missed you all. Those who are standing... I love you a little bit extra. <laughs> and those who are standing in the lobby, I love you a little bit more than extra. And those who bring their children to church, especially those who are sitting in the children's room, I think you guys can survive anything in the world because you have survived the kids' room at St. George. I mean, these guys are champions. Unbelievable. God will bless you. Thank you. Thank you for every father and mother who prepare their children and bring them to church every Sunday. God bless you. We have James and John today. The mother found something in them and she thought to herself, that will fill the void, the space they have in their hearts. She looked at her sons, James and John, and she looked at them and said, Habibis, you guys need some power. Just like our moms, you know, when they look at us, the children who are, once you cross 24 years old, once you pass that age, your mom has a list for you. If you're not married, your mom has a list for you, 100%. Habibi, do you see her? She's beautiful. And for girls too, the famous saying always, So moms usually want what's best for us. So the mom of James and John, she looks at them, says, what you need is power. I see a void in your life, so I am going, I am going to Jesus and ask him for something that you need in your life. When someone discovers your void, the space in your heart, that's not your mom or dad or someone that truly loves you, they will fill that void with their own ideas. If someone, if someone discovers your void, if that someone does not believe in God, does not love God, does not follow God, 
and discovers your void, your space within your heart, and that person will try to fill your void with all kind of poisonous things. And that's an invitation to you. Choose your friends wisely because your friends can find your void. Your friends can discover what's going on in your heart. The people that you open up to, they can find what's going on in your heart. And once you open up to them, they will see what you're lacking. And if these friends of yours are not believers in God, are not God-fearing people, friends, those friends of yours will end up filling your life with lies, with addictions, with sexual pleasures, with things that you have never experienced before and you think now you see the world in 4K. You think now you're free because you are filling your void with everything that's not permitted by your family principles, by your faith. And for a minute you think you're free. When you try to fill your void by yourself, you'll start doing things your own way. You'll start creating disasters. Have you noticed there are people who are just angry all the time? People who are mean all the time. People who cannot stand righteousness, goodness in the world, love and peace. People that cannot stand you being a believer in Christ. Because they have filled their void with their own ideas of darkness. They have filled their void, the space in their heart, with certain things that calloused their heart. I'm sure we all have our fair share of stories of people, you talk to them, you're trying to get through to them, and they are just so stubborn. They don't want to listen, they don't want to believe, they don't want to do what's right, because their heart, their hearts are calloused. Their hearts are dead. Because at some point they have filled that void, that space within their soul with anger, with revenge, with sexual pleasures, with addictions, with laziness. We all experience this. Sometimes we wake up in the morning and we don't even know what we want. And we start thinking, if I just get that business deal, even if that business deal is against my morals, it's okay, as long as I fulfill that void within my heart, because I think I can fulfill the void in my heart with money. The world tells you, you are identified by your sexual orientation. Jesus tells you, you are identified as my child. I love you. I love you the way you are. You are more than your sex. You're more than your money. You're more than your power. You're a precious child of God, and God loves you. So when I start doing things my own way, I'll start doing things my own way. I will lead myself to disasters. Frank Sinatra did things his way too, by the way. He ended up on the moon looking between the stars, you know. I see some laughs here. People know Frank Sinatra, so I'm that old, guys. Okay. 
So once you start filling that void with everything, you will have the illusion, the illusion of fullness instead of the reality of wholeness. It happens to all of us. The world understands what's going on in our hearts. So if I think, if I get what I want, I'll be happy. How many times you thought to yourself, if I go on that vacation, I'll be happy. If I get that purse, I'll be happy. If I get that car, I'll be happy. We drive by big houses and within ourselves we think, wow, look at these people. They live in these big houses. They're so happy. Look at these models, these actors, these Hollywood stars. They look so happy. And, and we discover later on, they're miserable. They're not happy. Because they have filled that void within their heart with everything else except Christ himself. I'm not saying all of them are bad. I'm not saying everyone who lives in a big house is bad. But if the foundation of that huge house is not Jesus, I'm telling you, you will run out of happiness. Sometimes you think to yourself, to fall in love with someone and to get married, you will be happy. And all of a sudden you discover that happiness goes away. Because Christ is not in the picture. You assumed, you thought to yourself that all I need is love. Isn't that what the world is preaching today? So why people are not happy? Isn't that what the world is preaching today? We preach freedom. We preach love. But the world is still a dark place and people without freedom because we have emptied these beautiful principles, biblical principles, principles that Jesus installed in us, we have emptied those principles from their maker. And their maker is not you and I, is Jesus. So rem you remember, before you seek love, be before you seek happiness, you were created by God and for God. And anyone and anything that you allow to enter and dwell in your heart if it's not sustaining Jesus, if not sustaining God within your heart, then all you're doing is living that illusion of happiness. You're basically destroying your life. So the mother, the son of Zebedee, she thought, if I give my son's, son's power, I will make him um, fill that void within their heart. And Jesus says, you want power? I'll give you something that's more beautiful than power. I'll give you the cross. Are you willing? Are you willing to carry that cross? James and John right away said, yes, we are willing. And later on, they discovered their faith in Christ does not depend on power, does not depend on fame, does not depend on money, does not depend on anything else. Their faith in Christ depends on their sacrifice. That's why James was the first disciple to die. And John was the last disciple to die. My brothers and sisters, in the book of Genesis, it says, When God created the world, it says, The face of the world was void. There is another word for void in Hebrew, which is toho woho. 
which is chaos. That's what it means. Void is chaos within us. So if I give my chaos to God, if I, if I give my cross to God, if I give my disaster to God, God can create an order with that chaos, with that void. The issue is not with us. The issue is not the love of God. The issue is with us not believing in the love of God. We come to church. We kneel before Him. We fast. We recite the prayers. We do everything that is required by religion. That's beautiful. That's great. But what Christ is asking us to practice and to live faith in Him. Christianity and believing in Christ is not a religion. It's a faith based in a relationship with Jesus Christ. And that relationship, my beloveds, is not between 11.30 and 12.30 on a Sunday. That relationship is on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, especially Saturdays and Fridays and Saturdays. That's where the problems happen sometimes. Where I try to fill my void somewhere dark. When I try to fill my void somewhere I should not be in. When I try to fill my void with self loathing by disrespecting my body in a place that God is not even there. God is not even permitted to be in the places that our kids, sons and daughters are going to. I love you. You know I love you. And I'm speaking from all my heart. We need some spiritual revolution. We need to get the, out of the state of being boys and girls. We need men and women. We need real men and women who follow Christ, not only on a Sunday, not only with their lips, but also in real life, outside, proclaimers for Jesus. People who are not afraid, not to wear the cross, but to live the cross. People who are not afraid, not to say, I'm Chaldean, I eat dolma. I'm Chaldean, my mom cooks for me. No, no, no. I'm Chaldean, I follow Jesus. I'm Chaldean, I'm strong in Christ. I'm Chaldean, I can face any darkness. I am a Christian from the Middle East. Whatever you call yourself, Chaldean, Assyrian, Syriac, stop with this nonsense. You are a believer in Christ. Follow Christ only. We try to fill our voids with silly things like your last name. What's your last name? Who cares? Your last name is Jesus. Your first name is Jesus. Your middle name is Jesus. Try to live that Jesus, and no matter where you're from, no matter what your family name is, try to live Jesus, and then Jesus will recognize you. So, can, so in the book of James, he says, Submit to God, resist, resist, the, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So the whole thing to fill the void in our hearts starts with submission to God. You can't call yourself a follower of Christ if you don't submit to God. And you cannot definitely resist the devil if you don't submit to God. And submission to God is repentance. How can you fight the devil? How can you kill the snake in your house, in your heart, in your family, in your relationship if you don't even submit to God? Not with your lips, Habibi. 
Because with our lips, words are very cheap these days. We can all proclaim faith in Christ. But really, submission to God is a true conversion of heart. A true submission to God. And submission to God is not He's going to make you weak. He's going to make you strong to face any challenges besides being in our kids' room anyway. Submitting to God is when you change that stubborn mukha of yours, that brain of yours, and say, I cannot survive without God. But you can't say, I cannot survive without God, yet you abuse everyone around you and you insult and disrespect everyone. That's nonsense. That's not a believing in God. All you're doing is you're putting a facade outside. Look at me. I love God. But on the inside, you don't even love God. You love yourself more than loving God. Spiritual revolution. I'm not going to bring you an example from hundreds of years ago of Many saints, I'm sure we have so many saints that have changed their lives. I'll give you a perfect example of a man that you see almost every week, Father John, our own Father John. I don't know if you know or not, I've asked his permission to share his story. Father John's past... He achieved everything he wanted. He graduated from Catholic school. He got a college degree. When he was sharing his story with us, Father Namir and I, we meet at least three times for lunch. We eat lunch together. He goes like, I was not happy. The only happiness... I could find was in the Eucharist. When I started going to Mass with people who are like four times older than me, I started doing Eucharistic adoration, and then I went inside. So like, well, this is what it means to live. This is what it means to be a follower of Jesus. This is what it means to be a good Christian. And that path led him, enlightened him, led him to the priesthood. I'm not asking you to be a priest or a nun. I have no idea what you have in your heart. God will bless you. What I'm saying, the story of Father John is the story of each and every one of us. The only salvation, the only path to holiness, the only path to peace, inner peace, is, is Christ. You want to save your family? Bring them to Christ. Husbands, you want to save your wives, lead them to Christ. On top of it, you can buy them a purse, an ice purse too, so it's okay. But don't think for a minute that purse will replace Jesus. That's the issue with our culture today. Replacements of what's holy with something that's unholy. My dear friends, may God bless you. May God be with you. May God always lead us to the path of righteousness. And today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Amen. <laughs>